Hey y'all, it's Nisi Dixon. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. It's another Thursday and your favorite ladies are here. It's time for another show. Ooh, ladies first panel. Y'all ready? Yeah. Okay. But, but I forgot one thing. I'm like, damn, it's been a minute since I didn't host it. Okay, one more thing. Follow us. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, what is it? Follow us at Jamie, that's me, Bondi Blue, and Nisi Dixon. All right. Hey, y'all. Hey, what's up? I need the audience. I need oh, the wow. sound of big mouth. <laughs> there we go. I cannot mimic that. I was like, uh, it, it wasn't giving. How are y'all feeling tonight? Good. Y'all. Um, you muted, Jamie? Oh, yeah, you're muted, Jamie. I thought I unmuted. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Okay. Y'all, <laughs> this whole week has gone by like super duper duper fast. For me, at least. <clears throat> no, yeah. Like this this year is kind of zooming. Oh my gosh. We're not ready to get halfway through April. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of depressing, low key. I'm like, um, I'm starting to notice people who I saw look kind of young look old now mm -hmm. are y'all noticing that and it's making me feel some type of way Ooh. so i was okay y'all know i was like going through the tiny desk concerts uh, a couple weeks ago because y'all did y'all see the big sean tiny desk i haven't watched it but i saw the you know girl oh i haven't seen it down y'all tripping the big sean tiny desk is so good it's, it's like one of my favorites so after i watched that it's not him who looking old, but after I watched that, well, actually during, he mentioned how he had been making music for like the past 14 years. And I was like, damn, like it's 14 years plus is when he's gone mainstream. So I was like, damn, that's a long time. So then they go from the Big Sean Tiny Desk to Justin Timberlake. Justin Timberlake was looking old. And I was like, what is going on? Justin is old though. Is he? How old is he? Justin should be almost 50. Almost seriously, is shouldn't he be? No, nah, I feel like he ought to be in his like, like early forties. Me too. Early forties. <laughs> early forties. I'm sorry. Okay, forty three. I see. Yeah, uh, he should not be looking at all. He's white. He yeah. yeah he white. Forty three mm -hmm. and white means you're almost fifty. <laughs> Like, I'm just saying, pull up any Caucasian person at the age of 43 and tell me they don't look almost 50. No, you you're not you're not lying. Um, yeah, that's the other person I was gonna mention is I jumped and y'all know I got a little bit of free time, so I jumped into Disney Plus and I was watching Z9. Did they oh my god, shit. it was my shit back in the day. Oh my gosh, my supernova girl. Yes, yes. So I looked up the the main girl, Z9, and she she don't look old, but she just looks so like different. Like, where is really? Tom? Yeah, yeah, she she's very I mean, she was a kid when that show was on, but I just movie, I mean, I just I don't know. I don't know where time is going. She's on general hospital now. Hmm. General Hospital, like that's another age thing. Like, are we to the point to where people, when when we was watching the kids shows, now they are on General Hospital? Ugh. You I'm muted looking at, I'm looking oh, okay, at her. I hear you. I'm looking at her, and I'm gonna say that the only reason she looks older is that whenever, like, whenever white women gain weight. They do this very old looking style with themselves because they're like uncomfortable with their body. So you're going to get a lot of blazers. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You're going to get a lot of shoulder pads, you know? <clears throat> and I think that makes you look older because when I look at her face, she doesn't have like in the face as much. She doesn't, she didn't look that old in the pictures I see on, uh, she look like DJ Tanner from Full House. Yeah. They kind of favor a little bit. Mm. Hold up, let me see. How old is she? When I look at her, no, she's four. No, she she's giving white girl forty. Hmm. 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 But Gabrielle Union's fifty. <laughs> like, 
Yeah, I thought to myself, maybe I need to just calculate this in my mind and stop looking at white people and being like, damn, where's time going? Like, maybe I should just look at the, at the, you know, the black people. I'm about to say, I'm about to look at Sarah Michelle Geller because Sarah Michelle Geller is 46. Uh, Who was that? Buffy. Buffy the Vampire? Yeah. As oh. you know, she, oh, she's a good one. She's a good one. That I was like, let me go look at her so that I can measure. <laughs> but yeah, no. Um, I think I think it's the weight on old girl that is making her look older. Cause I think mm-hmm. it, it's kind, you know, then the bob girl, that bob is so giving somebody. Yeah, so, yes. She tagged her hairstylist. I had to go to her hair stylist page and I was thinking it was gonna be some like small town hairstylist. The mm-hmm. hairstylist is in Calabasas. So Ooh. she went and requested that. Yeah, a shame. Cause yeah. like I Googled a picture of Buffy and Buffy is standing next to a woman that looks to be older and they might not even be that different in age. Like, why does <laughs> Alicia Silverstone? Yes. Mm. She what, another I, one. Where is she? 60, god damn it. How old is she? Lying. Alicia Silverstone on one of these for I was on her Instagram and I'm like, is this Alicia? She looked thrown the fuck away. Like, what Ooh. the hell? <laughs> oh no you know what she she one of them ones that you know as they get older they lose lip and the more lip you you lose and the more lines you know what i'm saying that's why i see why uh karen when i got them lips done i know that's right karen yeah a little yeah, pump the in there because yeah lose you def- it definitely starts to turn into lines like then it, then all of a sudden the top lip just go mm. wow so, mm-hmm. yeah, I just had to get that off my chest. But one of the things that I did not get to talk to y'all about, because we took a little break, came back last week. We didn't get to talk about Cowboy Carter. <laughs> um, we all posted about it on social media. And I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think y'all, both of y'all had talked about it on live. And I just wanted to know what y'all thought about <laughs> Cowboy Carter. I I enjoyed the parts that I did listen to because it's like 27,000 tracks. And I think I got through to this, maybe a song or two after the Miley Cyrus song, which I really, really like. Um, I think there are some good tracks on there. You know what I'm saying? Um, have I gone back to listen again since the first or second time I listened? No, but that doesn't mean anything. You know what I'm saying? Um <clears throat> But you know, it, it's it's cute. I hate this cover, but it's cute. It's good. Oh, um, good layering of the vocals. I'll say, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the album is pretty good for the most part. Um, I think it's just like a certain area that has me 19, 20, and 21. Um, what What's is it? Hands to, he- hands to Heaven, girl. that one right there. Uh, Tyrant and um, mm-hmm. the the honey the honey one, sweet, sweet honey bucking. bucking yeah. yeah, I mean I like the Le- Levi jeans is dope. I think that yes. what uh, Post Malone did his big one when he did that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Most Wanted is good. Protector is beautiful. Oh my yes. god, that's how made me about awesome. cry. Yeah. That that's- one in the first track made me the very first track the the requiem. Yes, that, was cool. that shit had me very emotional. It was the uh, most wanted for me. I think that's the one with her and Miley Cyrus. Mm-hmm. Yes, that the most wanted right there. That shit I gets you. It. I said, damn, this song's so I good. It hurts. Love it. I it's was the saying that reality song of life and love. Days. You know, I was all in my feelings, y'all. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. And then, um, <laughs> yeah, that song had me in my feelings. Protector had me in my feelings. Um. Shit, which one? The two hands to heaven. That's been in my in my in my head for the past couple of days. Oh my gosh, I love two hands to heaven. Yeah. Um, but I ain't gonna lie. The first time I listened to it, because it's twenty seven tracks. The first I listened to the first half, and I was like, mm, "This is cute." But that's the same yeah. way I did Renaissance. Me too. And, and I ended up being obsessed mm-hmm. with the shit later on. So like right. the first half, I'm like, eh, it's cute. Then I listen to the second half. I was like, oh shit. Then like when you listen to the second half, you start getting back to Renaissance. And I start getting real hyped up. Like, oh my gosh, this this hits. Okay. Uh Ripper Dance is actually pretty good too. Mm-hmm. I feel like with the album, you can like, I can't wait till she come out with all three parts because I'm a Beyonce yeah. conspiracist. 
there's something bigger to, to all of this. And it's all going to combine. Like once you get to like river dance, bounce on the shit. Dance, like you can hear yourself traveling into Renaissance Act mm-hmm. One. And I feel like it's going to be like a big visual movie. Like if, if y'all ain't been on TikTok, it's a rabbit hole talking about um, what's the yellow brick road? The Wiz. Mm-hmm. We're talking <clears throat> about the Wiz and how Beyonce's acts are like parallel to that. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's interesting. I thought it was pretty good. And I also like how she um, brought on the black country artist. Mm-hmm. I thought that was cool. One of them. You said what, Jamie? I said, I thought that was really dope with Tanner and some of the other ladies. I thought that was like amazing. I thought that was so awesome. And Tanner got a cute little song herself. I said, come on, bitch. Yes. That's what I was was like. Oh, I like her. And I had never seen her before. So I was like, you know what? Good job, B. Because you really are bringing people to the forefront that we would not have been paying attention to because a lot of us don't listen to country in current times. Like we might run a Faith Hill Shania Twain track every now and again. But oh, <laughs> you know. okay. did y'all realize that Dolly Parton was featured on Tyrant? Yeah, mm-hmm. I think, so. but I didn't hear it. I just saw her name on it. Where yeah, on I think Tyrant? her vocals might be underneath um, Beyonce's. And I was oh. just thinking, like, I wonder what made her like it had to be either her vocals or maybe she wrote, I'm not sure, but maybe they lowered her vocals. But I'm like, Dolly finna get paid the fuck down with this oh, Tyrant yes. song because Tyrant is another that's just out of the it that's was another, another song period. where the they Jolene. talked about how she was that it? I yeah, think that was a, she was that's credited as the only writer. Yes, she yeah, was credited as the only writer on that song. Dolly has already told y'all how she don't play with y'all. I think uh, I Will Always Love You might have been supposed to go to, um, what's your boy name? Elvis. Mm-hmm. And she was just like, and I could be wrong about this, but I think that's what it was. And she was, you know, he wanted to take some type of writer. No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. You're not taking credit. Like, no, she don't play that with y'all because she is the writer. So, like, she always likes for her songs to remain in that way so she can always get paid off of them. I know. She- that's right. She don't play. I love it. Yeah. Um, Shabuzi. Shabuzi. He is appearing to be a favorite. But I meant to ask y'all a question before I got into that. Here's my general question. Because I don't want y'all to be biased with y'all's answer. Okay. So. How do y'all feel like the relationship is official once y'all post? Like, let me just tell y'all the whole situation. Let, let's get into it. It makes more sense. Shabuzi hopped on Twitter. He saw Lotto's picture. He quoted the picture and said, hi, hey, how you doing? He was shooting his shot, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody was responding, <laughs> talking about, I don't know why it's so blurry, but anyway, everybody was responding, saying, this is a taken lady. He says, by who? Says who? And everybody's saying she been booed up for a minute and then they post the picture of 21 Savage. Shabuzi asked a question. He says, why they ain't never post each other? Mm. So basically he like, where are your man? If, if I don't see him, like, it I don't worry about him. It. It don't exactly. matter. <laughs> so people feeling some type of, some people are feeling some type of way about him shooting his shot because they like she take him. What are y'all's thoughts? Do y'all feel like he overstepped because he knew on the scene and he like reaching a little bit too far? No, I think mm-hmm. they overstepped. Who the fuck are y'all? Y'all don't know that lady. Y'all don't know that lady. Like what the fuck? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. What you mean she's taken? Not by you. Who are you talking to? Like I think <laughs> the internet is very audacious. Like very, very entitled and audacious. And I feel like young man, <laughs> do your thing, shoot your shot because there's nothing about Twenty One Savage that makes me feel like. He's a good partner. So right. I don't think that was wrong with him trying to see what's up, you know, but I uh, I feel like just because it's not on social media doesn't mean that the person's not solidified and in a whole nother relationship just because you don't see it. But okay. I mean, hell, he over there in the country world. He probably ain't sliding over there and he'll pop like this. I know what that girl got going on. So yeah, hey, they might do a song together or something. Maybe that's why he was over there asking some of some, hey. Mm-mm. That picture was for me. Period. She ain't married to him. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, allegedly, he's, he's was actually married. Did y'all hear that? Twenty-one Savage. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, cool. he married and got kids. 
I keep hearing that, but I think like to myself, three. is like, does he have a family? Is this a family unit or do he just, is he married? Like, See, that's what separated. I'm not sure about because I believe last year a picture surfaced of him with his family. I feel like it was for Christmas or something. I could be tripping. But it, I know for a fact that picture surfaced of him and his uh, baby mama and the kids or whatnot. Now, maybe they could have been coming together to celebrate a piece of a birthday or something. But that's why people keep clowning. That's what they was putting in the comments when he was like, why they never post each other? And they said, because I nigga married, baby. Because he's oh, married. Then that's, that's not I'm... your nigga mm-hmm. in real life. Mm-hmm. That's not your nigga in real life. That's what huh. Bria mm-hmm. Monet says it's a family unit. Oh, Lord. Whatever Get married. Oh. She got the 21 behind her ears. Mm-hmm. She got 21 behind her ears or she got his name? His name? Okay. His real name? I know Lotto, I know Lotto better act like she got some motherfucking sense. If that nigga met... Girl, first of all, <clears throat> married niggas' names. Girl... You better mm. act like that ain't just like you only be with him in private. That's the only place that relationship really matter. Girl, you better see what that country boy is talking about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of people were saying that they uh green card married. I always wondered how that worked when he came over here. I always thought uh 21 Savage came to America when he was like a kid. Yeah, it's when he was 12, I think. Is what yeah, he so it was like, would he still need a green card? Is that we I, I don't know. I'm I'm this is a serious Do question. Like, would he still need one? Because if not, it seemed like he married her by choice and not for green card. I mean, he had the kids. Uh, kids. somebody will let us know. Huh? If they had kids, then this is happening. So that whole green card thing is irrelevant to me. If y'all have, you know. Had kids like yeah, y'all got like two. I think you got two or three kids. I mean, like yeah, it's three of them. <laughs> After the rumors with Lotto, okay, okay. I uh, this let me read this comment real quick. Uh, I'm not laughing. Man, no rumors with Lotto been out for over a year, so that's interesting that she would just now file for a divorce in September. I don't know if I believe that she filed. I, I don't know. know. Shit, we ain't heard nothing. I, I don't think we're gonna continue to hear anything. This comment, though, from Cutie says, I always said no man's name would be on my body except my son. My husband had to pass before I considered putting him on me. Like, damn, you stood I mean, by that. That's the only way that would work is if that nigga died. <laughs> like, listen, I'm sorry. For, I might do something. We had matching tattoos. We Honestly, I, could, I would get Lyric's name tattooed on me. Like, Oh, you get his name? I would get Lyric's name tattooed. I mean, I, I would get the last name, but then I mean it's ours. Oh well, yeah. But um, I, I would get lyric. I would get it like on my uh, you know, in cute little cursive or something. Gotcha. I always thought yeah. the uh, fingers be dates are though. pretty. The dates are good on the fingers. That's cute. I, I'm, I'm not talking about biggest cuff Noel, but I I also like the way his name looks. Mm, so yeah. that's another yeah. thing. Another reason why I wouldn't mind. Like I I love the way. Encrypt. It would mean something different because you sing too. You know what I'm saying? So it like, yeah, would, that would be like you know, we could put a note on that K and wrap this thing up. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's lucky what I was thinking. You could tie it together real cute. I okay. would feel dumb like how Summer Walker got Larry tattooed if I had a tattoo that said Ted while kissing a whole nother man just now when she was just caught out a few. I'm tired, Summer. And I'm not saying you can't be out here and be free like the uh, these men be out here living their life doing. I, I don't want to police you like that. I just be wanting, I, I be feeling for you. So I really be wanting your stuff to be more legit and solidified before you bring him to us. Mm. You don't have you don't have to prove nothing to us. Like really keep that over there where it's at. Because I don't even know how these images leaked of her kissing all on this man. And she was just hugged up with uh, what's the dude from um, Lil Mooch? What what the what BMF, Lil Meech? Meech, 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 and Meech. Meech. I don't know what Ever the hell since Meech was seen on fucking ring camera going in and coming out of his cousin apartment. I mean, don't nobody care what's going on with him, okay? And she not- still went back, she did. and now she got a whole new boo. Just keep it to y'all, do y'all thing. She she really does dive too deeply. Like you could feel however you want to feel, but tattoos of a nigga name on your face, <sighs> ma'am, it's it's giving yeah. suicidal. <laughs> okay, yeah. 
Yeah. It's not right in the head. Also, have y'all That's seen, tragic. I just saw a video of her um, bowling. She really should have left her body alone. Because, like, she was running, and, and when she fell, I was like, ooh. Because I, I didn't know if she was going to be okay when she got ooh. up. But she was like, I always get it when I fall. I'm like, oh, okay. I was thinking I the same thing from that photo of her on Neighborhood Talk. I was like, why she did it? Why it was unnecessary. She, she has such a nice body already. And you're in, you know, you're in your 20s at the time. You had babies. It, you were going to spread anyway. It was so unnecessary. I also feel like she shouldn't. I think Summer was perfect the way she was. Face and body. There was mm -hmm. no need to fuck with it at all. And now that she's fucked with it. Every time I see her, I just be like, like I feel about Lil' Kim. Like, for what? Just for what? Uh. And still beautiful. But it's just like, girl, like what God gave you by itself was like, God did his big one, girl. You didn't, you didn't need to fuck with any of it. Yeah, he kind of more in the old face. Yes. Especially remember when she was like all uptight. You know what I'm saying? But she was just so cute. You know what I'm saying? Face uh -huh. and body alike was just so cute. Mm -hmm. Now you look like it hurt, you know. Mm. Well, it's a box of rocks. I kind of want a bad bag. Um, mm -hmm. Jamie, you said something along the lines of looking stupid or something for a dude. Mm -hmm. You said something like that, and it made me think about um, our good sis Hallie. Sheesh. Um, mm -hmm. Now I'm not saying. That Hallie looks dumb. I'm going to let y'all form an opinion, meaning everybody watching. We all friends here. Um, You know, I almost didn't want to discuss this just because, like, it almost feels like Hallie and <laughs> maybe they have. Hallie and DDG act like they don't want to be discussed. I feel like they say they don't want to be discussed. But then, like, we get into these articles about like stuff that people are gonna talk about so I'm like why are y'all gaslighting that's how I feel right mm -hmm. so it came out hold on let me oh let me grab the grab this video it came out that last year when Ruby Ruby Rose right she mentioned that um DDG had slid in her DMs when him and Hallie fell out um and you know Hallie then DDG, you know, they teamed up, acted like Hallie didn't know, not Hallie, Ruby didn't know what she was talking about and kind of gaslit her the same way that they gaslit us about um, the whole pregnancy thing. Like we cared too much, even though it was right in our faces. So I don't know why dudes get in front of Vlad. I don't know what he's paying these people. I don't know what he's putting in their drinks. I don't know what it is, but fools always want to get in front of Vlad and say some stuff that you know, they don't have to. And then it's a whole discussion. What is it about Vlad? Um, so let me share screen and I'm going to play the clip of what um, DDG, DD, DDG, I'm going to play the clip of what Daryl said to Vlad. Okay. Hold on. I hate that I can see Ruby Rose wig lace. It was, it was like a screenshot that she posted to me. DM. It was like going through a really, really, really. Yes, yeah, so, you know, being. I had, had no intention. Like I didn't and actually with Ruby. You know, she's imagine you arguing with your girl or whatever right and you know you get mad at her for saying that you know you know you, you're mad right you know you, you know what i'm saying i'm finna do this watch this type shit you know what i mean that i'm talking no. about in the song is when um like it was like a screenshot that she posted to me dming her okay you know i do want a really, really, really plan. rough patch, and it you was kind of yeah. So I was just like, you know, being okay, being petty, you know, type shit. But I had no intention. Like I did it in front of her. I had no. Okay, can I? Mm -hmm. 
Uh oh, hello. I'm here. I think the connection might have got messed up. I think so too. <clears throat> well, I'll say from the audio I heard, he was basically just saying that he did it in front of Haley, being petty, being childish, and it was going through a real hard time. And this was before she got pregnant. Um, and Ruby Rose posted the messages. And he basically, you know, she said, you would hit me up after you and this girl get into it. And he was like, you're right. Let me go heal. So, you know, um, I feel like he he's messy and miserable. And she has another movie role that she's about to do. And I think it might be like, you know, a trigger for him that whenever she's about to have any type of success, Mm -hmm. You know, to, to maybe sabotage or act a fool. Because why are you talking about this again when this already happened? This is old. I almost feel like she might have got pissed off with him for mentioning it again and took him off her Instagram. Now, they probably still together. That's her baby daddy. And she just had that baby. Like, I don't believe that they're going to be broken up, you know, consistently for a while. But mm -hmm. I just feel like he's always letting us know that is him like she you know she's weird too please don't get me wrong but back when they were hiding the pregnancy and he kept doing shit to put it out like it just be feeling like it's him mm -hmm. i feel like she supports him in all his bullshit personally mm -hmm. um i'm starting to believe that they are um one and the same at this point yeah that's how i felt about the um child y'all okay i just got triggered all over again we weren't we weren't live whenever she had made that um comment at that award show saying mm -hmm. something about men policing women's bodies and that's why she was uh quiet about her pregnancy i mean mm -hmm. do do whatever you want to do right um but yeah i the reason why i wanted to discuss this is because i feel like it's the same situation like her and ddg came to us with the bullshit, making it seem yep. like Ruby Rose was trying to infiltrate that relationship whole while he lets us know months later, which he doesn't even have to discuss. Like people ain't even thought about that, but he lets us know months later, it feels like Bonnie said to your point in an effort to piss Hallie off, lets us know some shit that you don't really even have to have us know. So I see y'all got y'all's clown mask on. Like y'all always do. It's consistent. So yeah. It's just on their ass, dude. I'm just glad I feel validated and being annoyed whenever they have videos of them on the internet and he giving her all these gifts and awards and all of that. And it's just kind of like, uh, whatever. Because it just feels like y'all doing it for the internet. It doesn't feel like it's genuine to y'all. You know what I'm saying? It feels like he's doing it for the internet. Huh. Definitely. I mean, I do feel like she was like a bit surprised that he was doing all of that so it was like a, a little cute to see that oh she didn't win and so he's giving it to her but then you can't help but to go back to this is what he always I don't know he always he does it. Like, this is what he he makes his money off of you know exactly I do think he has I, I do think he can be a likable person but the fact that everything is for entertainment mm -hmm. <laughs> can be a bit irritating mm -hmm. and also yeah. i clocked him using the deep voice in the interview with vlad which is another thing that makes me feel like the interview was done kind of on some i'm mad at holly right now so we you know i'm gonna talk about this shit again type thing because you, you ever like when was it recorded that's what i was wondering yeah, because I have noticed that some of these blogs, when it be real dry, they post some old shit. Okay. Like, especially they Vlad, did that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that might have been. It might have been some old shit. Because I was just like, why are he talking like that? But he did talk about it as if it was in the past. And mm -hmm. um, Vlad did say, "Was this before, or after y'all had the baby?" So that's another thing that made me think it was recent. Mm -hmm. Um, but I still feel like and like the kind of like toned down deep voice thing is sometimes a sign that a nigga is in his feelings and it's kind of being dry like just as a way of being because he's mad about something like that's just kind of the vibe that I was feeling I'm just trying to figure out when you mad why do you feel the need to take your ex in your girl face because you mad 
Why? What that got to do with anything? I, I don't think she made you that bad that you needed to text the ex. Cause he and you the same nigga that felt the way about the dude she was filming with. She was, you could tell she wasn't interested in him. Like, are you okay, oh, From the Little Mermaid? What? Yes. Like, are you okay? Ew, okay? So now I'm questioning, that happened before she got pregnant by him, right? Mm-hmm. She got pregnant with him right after that whole situation happened. Yeah, and they happened in September. They had the baby by November the next year, so... Mm-hmm. That's why everybody was like, girl, especially after that song came out. It was like, girl, he's or December. Saying, he's saying he'll sabotage you. Like he's actually saying it in the song. This is how what, old is she? You know? She's 24. 24? I think she's 24. <clears throat> hey Scotty. What's up, hey, Scotty? Scotty? What's going on? Um, thank you for the super uh, sticker, Yoli, and then Scotty, send love to my girls. Hey. What's up? Love, 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 love. Is it bad that I don't want to come down too hard on her, but I do at the same time? I want to come down on her because I feel like it's stupid and I feel like you have morphed into him just a bit. But then also at the same time, I'm like, she's 24 years old. A lot of people make dumbass decisions at that time she also seemed like a person to me in my opinion i don't know uh hallie for sure but she seemed like she jumped off the porch a bit late so some of the things that she is experiencing with a relationship she may not have experienced before and because of that she's yeah. gonna continue to you know what i'm saying yeah, make them he definitely from the teacher ass you know like, oh yes yeah. oh yeah that's what I'm thinking. So it's like, damn, I don't want to be too hard on her. This might be like a new relationship for her that she's never experienced this type of stuff before. And everybody has done something stupid. I think that's exactly what it is. And like, I get never that. experienced that before. I get Ooh. that. I, wh- it's I just see. like, it's the way she responds to us. Like, that's the it. Like, yes. the way she responds to that's the public. Yes. That's why I said that whole Whitney Bobby thing because it yes. is, we'll get <laughs> mad at everybody for being like, girl, y'all look crazy. You know, mm-hmm. and then years later, now you're doing an interview with Oprah talking about how you was looking crazy. And it's like, girl, yeah, we know. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Absolutely. That's why I'm like, I'm hard on her, but I, but not really because you have morphed into doing the same. Sh- he be on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Doing stuff and then be getting mad. Like he got mad when, um, I don't know what it was. He basically, he was trolling and people start trolling back, trying to identify, I guess, like the baby's name or something about Hallie. I can't remember. And then he came to the people telling them they doing too much and they need to chill the hell out. They need to go find them some business and this, that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, but this they is both, yeah, what you always bring it to them. And you don't want them to they, talk about it. You tell them how much money you spend on every single thing that you buy. And, and you get mad when people are all in the business wanting to know when the babies do and what the baby's name is. Like, right. you, you sell your life to you people. You put a damn ultrasound, I mean, yeah, an ultrasound yeah. picture. You put this photo up and then you don't want people to ask about it and make it seem like it's April Fool's. Then she gets accidentally okay. in your, you know, seen in your video, walking, wobbling. All mm-hmm. of us now to the internet, like, girl, she pregnant as fuck. And mm-hmm. y'all gonna keep arguing with us. And you shouldn't be like, talking about women's bodies. Y'all are horrible. Right, he took that V card. Y'all are a mess, Ooh. and it's very mm-hmm. possible. <laughs> For it's real. very possible. Probably, probably gave it a dick she never expected. And oh, but you know what though, a lot of young girls who have never been around like a lot of degeneracy, and I say that specifically because like a lot of times we'll say hood and all of that, but it's not always hood. It's like mm-hmm. degenerate type behavior. You're not used to it at first. It seems fun. Everybody mm-hmm. seems like great. And then over time, you start to notice how, like, snaky motherfuckers be. And somebody told you, hey, and people snaky. And you didn't believe it because we're family. And y'all just are misunderstanding us. And then, mm-hmm. you know, they snake you. And then all of a sudden, it's like, now you understand. I think a lot of young women have to go through that lesson. And I just think that's the lesson that she's having to go through. And it's harder because she's in the limelight, first True. boyfriend, weird family dynamic, you know. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, we wish her the best, but we're sure that this saga is not ending. He gonna embarrass her again. He act like somebody with a big dick. He act like somebody with a bad attitude and a big dick. Mm. Yeah, I guess. I'm like, mm, I don't know. Mm. Okay, so <laughs> y'all, let's get into some TV talk. I'm 
sorry. I'm sorry. Bondi, did you say that this boy got a big D I C K? Yeah, that's what she said. Uh, yeah, he he gives, he gives that type of vibe. Like you, you know, picture, like the exact this picture right here gives. I don't really have anything for me but the fact that I can fuck. Like <laughs> if he wasn't putting his life on Front Street, he would absolutely be like. It looked like he had money at the beginning, and then you find out he really didn't. If it wasn't for like the social media thing, but yeah, nah, he absolutely gives. I'm good at sex, and I have a terrible attitude to match. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing is, it don't even have to be that because if she ain't had nothing else, she gonna act like that regardless. Mm -hmm. But the reason why my face was so scrunched up is because I remember us doing a fashion um, clip. Mm -hmm. You know how we be reviewing the fashions, and he looked. No, nah, I wasn't saying that. I, I just remember how miniature he looked. Oh. So I was kind of disgusted thinking about the whole. Oh, the small body thing. But that's another thing that made me think it might. Because, like, you know, sometimes small niggas be like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Less than no reason. Like, are you like 5'5"? Five, five, it's like 3'4". I don't know. But, yeah, I, mm, I could see that. I could see that. You know what I'm saying? I can see it. Look at look how she look how both of them. <laughs> like, look how both of them got that look on their face. He's mine. Child, you need to yeah. get it up. <laughs> All right. So for TV talk, the first topic that we was gonna get into um, was Summer House. Just like overall, Summer House is a show. Like I, I really liked the first season. Jasmine and Silas was getting on my fucking nerves. I'm really glad that Silas has not returned. Um. And, you know, I part of me wants to feel bad for Jasmine because she feels like she's on the outs. But I don't feel bad at all because she completely showed her ass last season trying to be in charge of the girls, trying to be producer. It was it was disingenuous. But I'm, I'm going to say something else. On the other side of things, I do feel like Jordan is annoying the fuck out of me. She annoyed me last season. She rubbed me the wrong way when she threw a fit about the men wanting to pursue, uh, pursue her. Like last season, I don't remember anything like really inappropriate, but the men were wanting to pursue her. And she like immediately made it seem like everybody was over-sexualizing her. Oh my gosh, everybody treat me like a piece of meat. Everybody wants me, blah, blah, blah. Um, and this season she's back with almost like the mean girl energy. And I feel like Jordan wants to be in charge of the girls, which is part of the reason why she was annoyed with Jasmine. So as far as Jordan and Summer, I can't fool with them. Shanice, I actually really like her. She got a nice, fun spirit. Um, and Noelle, Noelle is cute. Um, but thirsty. I, yeah, yeah. We got to talk about that last scene where she was going after Alex. Alex, to me, is giving nothing. But... Um, Y'all go ahead. Let me know what y'all think about Summer House. Go ahead, Jamie. It's a really good show. I have really, really um, been enjoying it. Um, yes, I have to agree. Uh, Jordan has been getting on my mother nerds okay so much so I ended up siding with Summer because I just felt like Jordan was doing too much like this past episode like why are you feeling away yelling at this girl and she was just upstairs crying which or not crying but consoling you because your motherfucking hair falling out your head like I just I'm not featuring Jordan at all um I just don't, I just don't like Jordan ass, especially how she tried to side with Bria all because she didn't want Phil to come to the house and stuff, but you was just all okay with Mariah coming to the house and everything. Girl, f you like, I just, mm -mm. um, Noel, you are so gorgeous to me. I love your personality, but I hate that you running behind Alex and didn't want to sit up there and talk about the new dude that came at the house. And she was like, oh yeah, see, you know, he want me to run behind him. See, that's the type of zoo that he is. But you know, I'm not that type of girl. I'm not going to run behind him like that. And I'm like, why not? But you over here running behind Alex. And Alex she ain't even trying to make sure Alex knew she was available. Like. Why? And embarrassed herself though. Yeah. Like how does Alex, how is he more mindful that he smashed your friend than you are? Why are you still going after a guy that fucked on your friend and then mistreated her? I felt like whatever energy you get from him, you deserve it because you you're feel being like stupid. he mistreated her though, Jamie? Say what? You feel like Alex mistreated Summer after he yes, smashed her? I do. I do. I feel like, um, one, she did overstep her place in his life and wanting more than what it was he was willing to give her. 
Um, I do believe that. But I also feel like when you get in those situationships, dudes can make you think that they are also more interested than they really are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he didn't necessarily, in my opinion, let her know out the gate that he wasn't really featuring her. If you are saying that you noticed things about her a long time ago, but you continue to entertain her so much so to fuck her, you're not right in this situation either to me. Um, so yeah, they both damn fools, personally, um, in my opinion. And when it comes to Shanice, I like Shanice, but I'm also reserved about her because she gives me Ashley Darby tease just a little bit. I That's can't funny really put because my you know I like Ashley. <laughs> I can't put my finger on it. I mean, maybe it's her just being so free. And I love that she is. But I also hate that you think everybody want to see your body all the fucking time. Bria, you get on my nerves. I am with you about Phil wanting to come. I know you want him to come back to the house. I kind of am with you on that. But I'm also with everybody else because it's like, girl, she <clears throat> did kind of, you know, make a bad impression last time. So I know he can't come. But the fact that you feel like everybody should bend to what it is that you want is irritating the hell out of me when they're already bending to pick up your dog's shit, which is really killing me the absolute most because yeah. you got a dog on this trip where other people are picking up his shit. And I don't know if y'all noticed Shanice sitting on the sofa with her sandwich in her hand and she had to hold the sandwich over here to keep Milo ass from jumping up to get, get your motherfucking dog. That's what you need to do. Get your dog. Like she's irritating as hell. But Ooh. I appreciate her saying that it's whatever mariah can come it's cool and i feel like if mariah can come then y'all probably gonna have to let phil come too so i do think mariah should come back but phil you ain't have to open your damn mouth but the episode the season is giving good i'm loving it i don't i don't want phil to come because i feel uh -uh. like phil was like acting like a child like pouring in that man bathroom and not wanting to flush it Ooh, like all that it like you, a tyrant yes and and you're not respectful and i don't think he should stay in that house simply because he's not respectful so you need to go and stay somewhere else they see you out around in town fine but staying in the house no um alex i feel like they give alex way too much um energy Yes, he is nice Absolutely. with him, but it's not that serious. And I feel like unless he lets you know that he's into you, there was really no reason for the new girl to say anything. Like I, I was even mad at her for expressing that she felt a way about him talking to somebody. Like, girl, you playing the fuck out of yourself. Stop. So you know, I like it. Yeah, yeah. I think you. you know, I you know think that you I'm interested. Embarrassing. Cut it off after that. I wouldn't have let you see no more. And, you know, first of all, I wouldn't just know. I wouldn't have done none of that shit. But you know what I'm saying, y'all. She, Hell she, no. she made Look herself. Said, I mean, yeah, I know. I was around here acting single too. I said acting. You, you are. are. What are you talking about? <laughs> you acting like they decided to go together or some shit like that, girl. That's not any of what's happened here. I knew he was toxic when he came food. on the show last season talking about I write music, I do yoga, and I'm vegan. All yeah. three of them things talking about it, like. And not saying that people who do that is something wrong with them, but, but it's him is giving new age hotel. Yes. And also trying to appear as though you're releasing the fuck boy spirit that you still very much got on you. You mm -hmm. trying to appear as though you have all green flags when it's mm -hmm. something given that you don't. He I, I and why the hell she buying food and a nigga didn't even say thank you. And then you over there expressing how much you like him. Are you okay? He was just Girl, like, yeah. I, I don't I eat see. that. You you try yeah you try you try Boy, get the <laughs> fuck oh my God. yeah I wouldn't say nothing else after that she dumb as hell um summer you dumb as hell too <laughs> <laughs> that's all he can be ain't even charge you let you fuck him for free okay y'all are embarrassing yourself over a goofy looking ass nigga that wouldn't be able to get as many women as he can get if he wasn't on this show like yeah he can get women because he's tall and he got nice skin nice little beard or whatever but the swag ain't there so ultimately you could take him or leave him y'all putting extra on it that ain't really on it i think almost yeah. because y'all have no other options in the house y'all are just like he's the best option in the house so that's who we're gonna set exactly. our sights on exactly. chill out and right. I'm, I'm a legend's cousin. Yeah, he <laughs> is, allegedly. Oh, mm -hmm. then. Mm, that's interesting. I wonder. Mm, never mind. Anyway, uh, I'm just saying, I've seen John Legend and Tidy Whitey's recently, and I just was kind of like, 
Oh. For C.T. Thanksgiving beard. Um. Anyway. Did y'all feel like Summer was right in saying she owed Noelle nothing when it came down to who she's messed with? Oh, okay. I'm so glad you asked that question. Summer low-key pissed me off when she said that. Mm -hmm. Just because if you're going to offer up the information that, yeah, we hung out, knowing that you kind of mean something. And I feel like Summer felt like that was enough for Noelle to not want to pursue Alex. And it wasn't clear to Noelle what you meant by hanging out. So if Summer's true intention was, I don't want you talking to him, you should have came out and said, me and this man had sex. But you pushed her to say, oh, he's fair. She told her he's fair game. And the minute that she wasn't turned off and able to make the decision herself that she didn't want to talk to him, you had a problem. Mm -hmm. So Summer, I, I, I couldn't get with that. I think that's the whole reason why she was sitting at that dinner table talking about the person you were inside of. Like, say it with your chest. Either you want him, her to talk to him or you don't. Summer was trying to come off too much as like, oh, I'm a cool girl. I don't give a fuck. Uh, exactly. We just hung out. But was mm. in your feelings. I don't. But like she was in your saying, feelings. You you didn't invite me to the party. I was in. You were excited, like girl inside, girl inside, girl. We needed that. We needed that. We <laughs> uh -huh. it had to go that far. Everybody like, made the same face because it was nasty. Nobody needed that. <laughs> and I I can encourage Jamie when I tell you I cannot stand Bria. And her response no. to Mariah coming back pissed me off because I feel like, girl, Mariah should have never been sent home for that shit anyway because mm -hmm. you're the one that kind of walked up on her like you was bout it, bout it. And I'm sorry, there's nothing I can't stand in a bitch that wants to chess up to somebody like she's ready for the physical. And as soon as they do the, the smallest little uh, now you want to, I'm scared for my life, white people police right. officers in the situation. Yep. And I can't stand that shit. And that's what I feel about Bria. Bria is aggravating as shit. I don't either. think that Mariah comes back though. I was looking on Wikipedia, um, and they actually, and I think yeah. that uh, Jasmine's gonna leave early actually, because whenever I looked at the the casting, they listed Jasmine as a friend of the show instead of main, even though oh, she's wow. supposed to be there the whole time. And then Mariah, they listed her as a friend in season one, but not in season two. I'm gonna mm. tell you, I do low key feel bad for Jasmine. And the reason why I say this is because when you really look at it, Jasmine was turning into a separate wife for room and board. Like yeah. she was living on the fucking street and this nigga showed up like a savior and she did what she had to do. Did she say, I don't remember that. She was living on the street. She was living in a car. Oh, wow. Wasn't she living mm -hmm. in a car? And in a I, well, That was right before yeah. Silas. Mm -hmm. Right oh. before him. They, they made it seem like everybody had their shit together, but really the only person that really had their shit together was Jordan because Jordan was doing what lingerie modeling or some shit like that. That mm -hmm. had her in the face of feeling everybody's always centralizing me. Girl, give me a fucking break. You know how these niggas gonna be. They gonna like you. It's cool as long as ain't nobody touching you. Right. And you, you know, all, all you gotta do is curtail. Them niggas ain't even the aggressive type. So she was just no. doing too much for me. I don't mm -hmm. like Jordan. I think her attitude is stank. I'm sad that her hair is falling out, but I feel like she looks for reasons to be a bitch. And I just kind of feel like, girl, Jada Pinkett don't even act like you. And they stay dogging her out. Um, I'm with you on that. She look for reasons to be do. upset. Yeah, yeah, all the time. And I think it's because she got some shit with her. Like, go to therapy, but stop working it out on these people in his house. Please. Um, but yeah, I, I felt bad for Jasmine because I do feel like Jasmine is pregnant and Jasmine probably feels alone. She, they posted her baby shower pictures on um, yeah. uh, OMFG. Yeah, yeah no, they I, announced it last year. Yeah, no, I meant uh, the lonely part. She's probably lonely. Um, because oh, got it. Silas oh, yeah. And she had now, lonely. And her friends, who she thought were her friends, are now treating her like shit because of her Stepford wife shit. It, it was aggravating, but it's not enough for y'all to just be like, fuck her. You know what I'm saying? Like to me. Yeah, yeah. And I agree with that. Um, yeah. Especially when I, they brought, she brought them opportunity. Yeah. Did she though? That's what I was trying for to show. Out. I thought she brought everybody together for the show. That's I, what it seemed like for sure. But the way that this season is going, it's like well, who is Jasmine? The word I think might have been that Jordan thought she was going to be the main girl when Jasmine was the main girl. Yeah. And I think they made Jasmine the main girl because her man was there. And there was more of a storyline with Jasmine and Silas than there really was in, you know, the house. 
So mm. I think that Jasmine became the breakout star simply because of her interactions with Silas. Jordan felt the way because she thought she would be that girl. You can't tell me Jordan don't think she hated a pretty mean girl squad. She do. Um, <clears throat> so I think that she really blew the whole situation with Jasmine because she was jealous, basically, mm -hmm. that she wasn't head of the show. And I mm. now she's attempting to be, which is why she's always talking to people crazy. Like when her and Summer were going back and forth at the table and Summer was saying that, you know, why are y'all laughing? And she was talking to the guys and she was like, who's laughing? It was like, wait a minute. Yeah, baby. that came out of nowhere. Right. And then kept bothering her in the damn car when the girl was trying to get out the damn car. I'm like, I would have left Jordan right where the hell that she was That was drunk as fuck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, Summer House has been pretty good, so I'm going to keep watching that. Mm -hmm. But I just don't want them to cancel it like they did Southern Charm New Orleans. Please, don't. I used to watch that too. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was good. Just when I was getting into it, kaput. Listen, Bravo Con to move to next year because y'all already know y'all need to focus on these damn shows instead of focusing on the con. Because I feel like we already getting con the hell out <laughs> when it comes to these TV shows. <laughs> anyway, get your okay. head in the game. Please <laughs> get it in the game. Slacking on production while y'all was sleeping, loving hip hop came. <laughs> Listen, while y'all was playing, loving hip hop producers was like, "Bitch, oh, we got y'all. We gonna be back." Let me make a note to watch loving hip hop ATL in Miami on two times speed. So I can hurry up and get through that. <laughs> yeah. I need to watch it. Hurry up and get through that, be for sure. I'm gonna check both of those out. But did y'all catch Amir and the other dude from Summer House, the white version? That I know what gave you're talking about. Andy a kiss. Yeah, I'm, on the I cheek. Kind of felt, I was like, who kisses their boss on a cheek? A boss that threatens if you mm -hmm. don't give me that boy bussy, you may not have a job. Ah, <laughs> that's what people was feeling like. People was feeling like you know Andy has some type of vibe about him that makes the the straight dudes point. come on the show and be a little more friendly. Also, I think Andy has a thing for, for black men. I think he has something for young. Especially in Amir. I agree. Yes. So Sometimes. it is definitely given. He probably kind of has the energy about him of, you know, if on my good side, then, you know, it's good for you. And if you, you know, if I'm attracted to you and you kind of allow me to flirt and flirt back and don't, you know, take an aggressive attitude towards it, then I'll probably, you know, you're my friend or you're one of my favorites. Well, y'all remember... Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, one of them, I can't remember what show it was, one of the White House wives that got fired with blonde hair came on talking about how Andy made a joke saying something about, he called her on the phone saying, come watch me have sex or something. Mm, Y'all remember? Brandy? Was that Brandy? Yeah. I think it was Brandy. Like Brandy. And then he admitted to it and he said he was joking. And it was kind of like the end. Do you remember? Yes. Yeah, I that did. came out. He, he was admitted like, yeah, to that's it? I didn't know yeah. he admitted to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He admitted to it and was like, I was clearly joking and like left it at that. Didn't he, girl? All I he know is. Doing? I think, oh, I don't know. We're going to look that. Oh, girl. It is giving rich, oh, rich white daddy. <laughs> What's up? Kings of Bravo. Wow. Wow. This is gonna be a good day. This is a good day. Y'all are just drinking the day away on Hudson Street. Is that what's happening? Wow. Wow. West is making his clubhouse debut tomorrow night. Too excited? Yes, I'm fired up. Just don't be too mean. I'm not gonna be mean. I'm I'm I might pick you I might pick you up. All right. <laughs> be careful. Now, can I say some? And I mean, I'm just being honest. This is my observation. Like the way he held the camera on the white guy mm -hmm. leads me to believe that he was already hanging out with the mirror. And the white guy walked up on them, which is why he was like, "Oh, so he's just hanging out with the such as like it was given. He was already hanging uh, out with a mirror." Play it one more time. It sounded like he said, "Are y'all just hanging out?" He did say, "Y'all." Like them two were That's already together. He Probably, That's what I but it looked like he was still he was there with a mirror. He may have said y'all, but it looked like he really was know. there with a mirror. Also, like oh boy, it caught them or popped up on them. Like, on the up? West Village, look who I run into. The two, hello, the two. He said he ran. Kings That's what he said. That's what he said. Wow, wow, <laughs> not wow. He loves it. <laughs> this not is a good day. 
Y'all are just drinking the day away on Hudson Street? Is that what's happening? That's how you got to be. Wow. Wow. West is making his clubhouse debut. He said today is going to be a great day. When he said, don't be mean. When when West said, don't be mean, I'm going to pick you up. Y'all do what y'all do over there. Bravo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Whole <laughs> oh, bunch of white men. Bravo, All guys. Right. <laughs> um, and keeping it on Bravo, y'all. Let's get into talking mm-hmm. about Real Housewives of Potomac. Okay. I got a couple bullet points for this um reunion. So, first thing I want to talk about is Giselle Daddy and Candace crying. Um, rest in peace, Giselle Daddy. Um Candace crying irked the fuck out of me only because I need you to stand up, Candace. Um, it is so Candace to me seems very much and has always seemed like, at least when it comes to the green eye bandits, has always seemed very double minded. Um, you know, it seemed like when the audience was insinuating that they were colorist, you kind of would get along. You would say that people were treated differently. You would say that the goalposts would move. You would want to have these colorism conversations. Then you would go on Angela Yee and say they weren't colorist. Then you would sit in the previous reunion and say you didn't think that any of your castmates are colorist. Um, and then whenever they flat out ask you, the, Giselle had asked her something. One of y'all might remember. And Candace's response was, I didn't know that that would affect you because I grew up in the household where we could talk about the diaspora. Candace, again, did not stand on it when she was directly challenged to say, what colorist things have you experienced on the show? She was afraid to say it. When to me, it seemed like throughout this reunion, she was silently quitting. Like she she didn't read the girl. She didn't come with any facts like she would have. And I, I go up for Candace. I enjoy Candace on the show. I think by her leaving, it's going to be a big missing piece, which she knows. But it's really hard when Candace will not advocate for herself when it comes to Giselle and Robin. She always succumbs to some sort of tears and you can't prove a point and they end up making you look dumb. They end up gaslighting you pretty much like they do on the show. Giselle ends up saying that she's an AKA, so she can't be colors. Her dad is a, was a civil rights activist, so she can't be colors. Robin ends up saying, I've never been accused of being racist before, so I can't be colors. That's so hurtful. You know, she tear her whole damn face up, making an ugly. I've never even seen her cry that hard over fucking Juan, her damn husband roommate. And you on there you know, really putting on a show because you want to be victim of people saying that y'all have some colorist tend- tendencies and you have had on the show. Um, so I will say this. I do think that Giselle and Robin have done things or they have made decisions, maybe unconsciously, when it comes to how they treat the women on the show. And when you look at how the women are treated on the show, I can confidently say that the lighter skinned women have been uh, treated better on the show by Giselle and Robin than the darker skinned women. Um, And I don't know how many examples they need for that. I can say that's factual without even having to say, like put a label on it and say they're colorist in their everyday life. From what I've seen on the show, the way that they plot, looks like it aligns you know by the paper bag test so what are y'all's thoughts i feel like candace speaking on colorism and stuff um i know she said that she doesn't believe her castmates are colorists but i feel like she was more so in my opinion gearing that towards the producers and the different treatment between her and giselle right um that's what i think you know um i also feel like she felt defeated while she was at this reunion so it is what it is i mean she didn't she quit on the stage actually mm-hmm. when giselle said get out of here she said i'm out so she had already you know quit she probably felt like i've talked so much and tried to tell y'all so much shit. like i really don't even care right now but if apologies is what y'all want i'm gonna go out with style i apologize to you hoes and y'all won't see me no more is what it was given you know you do not have to worry about me i think that the production is definitely a part of it because, I mean, you could just tell by the way they don't have certain video footage in order to back up Candace or Wendy's claims about Giselle. 
Um, that definitely feels intentional to me. Um, and also, as you know, we've all said many times, y'all can forgive Karen, you can forgive Ashley, um, you can even forgive Mia, Mia. when it comes who y'all just met. But when it comes to Candace and Wendy, y'all have no words for them. Y'all are icing them off the show. I mean, the way Robin threw the relationship with Candace away to me was like th the biggest showcase of how you're really not as valued in this friend group if you are not a certain complexion. And see, Ashley is like the most, like the one that, that showcases that the most out of the group because I feel like she's gone for everybody at one moment or another. And I think that's why I like Ashley the most. Ashley is ready to eat. Everybody can get it because yeah. she's on the show to get a check. But mm -hmm. she also is a part of those conversations with Giselle when they're plotting on people. And I can't really fuck with her because I feel like she absolutely was a part of the plotation on Chris. They oh, plot hey, on hey, Chris hell and yeah. when you got Deborah, you got Mia, you got, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, Robin and Giselle kind of pushing this narrative about Chris. And of course, Robin, I wasn't pushing a narrative. Girl, you definitely made a narrative, uh, made yourself a part of the narrative when you was mad at Candace because Candace wasn't okay with you trying to ice Wendy out. And I remember, I think they oh, were staying yeah. at some house and her and Wendy had gotten into it. Candace got there after everybody and Robin tries to talk to Candace. And because Candace is not taking Robin's side, it was like after that, she just had it out for her. Then we had the speaker situation. I think Robin ignores all the shit she did to Candace before mm -hmm. Candace got to That's the right. Party. And so, you know, that's why I feel like, girl, you really feel like you can just shit on Candace and she should just take it. Yep. And I think Giselle is more intentional about the colorism and Robin just kind of like tags on because Perfect. that's her personality. Um, and Ashley, Ashley can say whatever she wants to, but Ashley has been jealous of Candace since the day she met her. Since yeah. the day she met her at the pageants and found out that the dark skinned girl was a better candidate than you and had a better life than you growing up and did not have to scratch and survive good times under the bridge with Sheila and a man in, you know, in a damn tent. You, I think, have always had a jealousy towards Candace. And I think that Giselle and Ashley kind of have that thing in common that they both feel because of how light they are, Ashley, because she has a white father and Giselle, because of the affluent light skin Creole family that she comes from. And that's another thing, like coming from Louisiana, y'all specifically, I know Giselle knows what she's doing. I know she knows what she's doing. And I know her daddy was colorist too. Um, I grew up around men like that in my family and around, you know, just everywhere. School, church, and colorism is so huge and prevalent in New Orleans, specifically in the black men who are involved in politics, because a lot of the times those men look a certain way. If you look at our, like, you know, mayors going back, they look mixed. They have soft hair or really light skin. The only person that did not fit that was Ray Nagin, child. And y'all saw how they treated him. He had to go to jail. But yeah, y'all, I, I just kind of feel like you're not going to make me believe you don't know what you're doing. You know exactly what you're doing. And every time Giselle was doing a Nini thing, if she can't argue with you, she's going to uh -huh. get loud. She was doing that. Loud or either super she loud about Yes. Oh, like she, like I'm not gonna give you nothing. Crying for her, and yeah. Andy was pointing it out. Like Candy still has empathy for you, and she was like, and it's not even about her. When I tell you, I was like, Candace, if you don't suck them motherfucking tears up into your eyes like a vacuum cleaner, bitch. Yep. Get your shit ever. together. Yes. And then I was, I'm mad that Candace didn't go at her the way she should have. They might have edited a lot of it out, but I just wanted Candace to put Giselle's multiple layers of neckage a little bit more. Yeah, and I, I feel like she did go at her. When Based I said, on how the editing happened. But go ahead. Uh, when I said I like Ashley the best, I have to clarify. I mean the best out of the Rick Havoc people on the show. Like, like I mean the best out of the people who produce in tear shit up which is Giselle Robin Ashley I, I look at the show as like okay there are people who are on the show and then people who are um praying on people to create a show I think Ashley does that the best um but yeah I had to clarify that um and then can we um 
get a chair for NECA in the middle and some damn cards because the only way she was going to make herself relevant during this show was asking damn follow-up questions behind Andy. Um, so let me right. ask you a question. So what do you think? Is there anything you could do? Is there anything you could do? NECA, if you didn't give enough to speak in part one and part two, sit there, sit there <laughs> and, and, you know, disappear into the damn cracks of the couch because I was like, NECA, be quiet. Um, yeah, she can go for sure. Micah says, do y'all think the sexual tension goes to goes to why Wendy and Candace don't go in as hard? Wendy and Mia, ooh, interesting. Ooh. Wendy and Mia and Candace and Ashley have admitted to some dot 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 behavior, which is true. Absolutely. Have, hmm. I think that is a part of it. Damn, I forgot what I was about to say before that, but yeah. Yeah, something happened at BravoCon where they ain't really go into detail, but was talking about their weird relationship. Ashley, yeah, Ashley said something about, you know, something happened. They experienced some things in New York yeah. that, that only they would, only, they, they would never discuss with anybody or something like exactly. that. Exactly. Like, and I've been saying that, that that's the reason why Candace is always giving Ashley chance after chance, because whenever they finish the reunion show, Ashley and Candace go kitty click or something um to get past it all <laughs> so <laughs> mm -hmm. but what I, oh a NECA y'all I actually was enjoying NECA a couple of times during this reunion show primarily when she turned to Robin it was like but why are you colorless Robin <laughs> I didn't only because I felt like anytime she asked questions to Giselle and Robin it was to set them up to better explain themselves it was but that to, and to make herself happen. relevant Yes, mm -hmm. I knew why she was doing it, but in the moment she was so dry and like interviewy about it, like it was just hilarious. She was interviewing the whole time, so she was, but you know, she's she's fake. Her, you know, who uh, she reminds me, she reminds me of Lee from Married to Medicine. Who they are uh, from Married to Medicine, the one who was on with her husband talking about being trained? Oh, her, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, Necka reminds too. me of her when it disappeared comes to into the reunion couch because I forgot she was on the show. She <laughs> disappeared into the reunion because I, I just didn't even like the way she was talking. Like, please shut up, ma'am. Don't don't say nothing else. Don't just don't say nothing else. But ne Necka also, what's up with Necka and her husband? Like, why she went in on him like that? If you're I not gonna just talk to each other, crazy. crazy. It was crazy. Watch, she in for it. Come if she get another season or two. They're going to be on your marriage. I can't wait to see it, girl, because for your man to be traveling as much as he is, knowing you're trying to have a baby and he hasn't found a hospital locally yet and he's still traveling, they're going to create a story about him messing they're around with somebody on else. Her marriage time. And on her edges. For sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Y'all have any other thoughts on Potomac? Not really. Fuck no. Ugh. <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, keeping it about the housewives, we didn't really talk about Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. That was a show that I was like on and off about. Um, I think it ended, I don't remember when it ended, January maybe, when it came out about Monica Garcia running the gossip page or like a troll account for the housewives of Salt Lake City. Um they, I don't know. Okay. My opinion on this is I do believe Monica, when she says that she wasn't the only person running the account, that's, that's obvious, but they want to blame it on her. So the ladies on Salt Lake City, I feel like they stand for nothing. This is the first time that they've ever stood for anything. And it's kind of irritating that they decided to take a stance against something so hard when it came to Monica. But whenever they do shit to each other, it's just like, oh, we have to be good Mormon people. And then they're like, cool the next day. Um, anyway. Monica Garcia was set to not return to Salt Lake City. It was pretty clear that she was never going to appear back on the show because Andy read her down at the reunion pretty much. He gave her a hard time and he said, we would have never cast you for the show if we knew that you were running this Instagram account, which trolled the women on Salt Lake City. So it was pretty clear she wasn't coming back. Now she announced that she is pregnant. She said that she was surprised. Um, she's 39 on birth control, got a mystery boyfriend. Um, and it comes right after Rihanna mentions that Monica should have never, never left the show. And if they can keep Tom Sandoval on um, Vanderpump, then why couldn't you keep Monica on Salt Lake City? And honestly, I was sleep on, like I watched the first season of Salt Lake City. And then after that, I was sleep because I was so tired of like the argue kiss makeup two seconds later. 
Um, but I didn't start tuning in until Monica came on the show. I thought she was good TV. And I think the ladies need to be for real about this whole plot about who was running the Instagram page. So what are y'all's thoughts? Should Monica return to the show? Um, like, do y'all agree with Rihanna when she says if Tom returned, she should too? Low key, because I feel like there have been a lot of illegalities and people just doing straight up, you know, fraudulent fake ass stuff on these shows and y'all don't kick them off the only thing about monica is you're basically an outsider for real for real why would anybody continue to hang with you after what happened you know what i'm saying so that's the only reason i feel like it's really not a genuine situation if she does come back but also i don't know if i feel like their show is entertaining enough without her yeah um, I agree. Y'all let Tom Sandoval do all that cheating and whatever else the hell he gonna do with another cast member um, and brought him back and let him be ridiculed. And I understand the situations might be a little different. Tom Sandoval has been around for God knows how long and he had a mishap in his relationship. He's not running a blog. I get that. But I don't give a fuck about her running a blog. And I agree with Riri 1000% because here's the thing for me. Y'all hoes don't want Monica around because y'all was the ones running to Monica telling the tea on each other. Facts. And okay, y'all Jay. are afraid of what Monica is going to end up releasing about you hoes. And they need to bring that girl back for sure. Thank you, Jamie. I completely forgot that part because they all were DMing her. They all were DMing her about each other, and that's where she was getting the information. They hairstyle uh Heather hairstylist mm -hmm. um was in on it too. Oh goodness. They all was messy as hell. Then Heather, who's fake, talking about some uh I finally figured out who she is. Oh my gosh, she is the girl that runs this or that. Girl, you been knew who, who the fuck she was. You uh -huh. was just trying to figure out how you was gonna let everybody else know. But all you hoes talk about each other. The difference is she just happens to be in charge of a page, and y'all found out that it was her. But the gag is all you bitches got fenced us. That's what's killing me softly. All of y'all got fenced us talking shit. And then Andy had the audacity to, you always on the wrong side for me, Andy. Sit uh -huh. up there and tell this girl, had we known that you was running this page or whatever, we would have never hired you. Um, You've hired other people for worse. Like, come on now. And they have been able to hang around continuously. So let's not and say that we did. I don't think that girl did anything that damn bad. Y'all let people go to prison. And then return back to a damn show. Get the uh -huh. hell out of here. Mr. Uh -huh. I'm so excited to see Apollo and Teresa and anybody else. Get the hell out of here, sir. That's the, next. I'm going to tell you what it was. Heather, okay, old Zimpic head ass. I feel like finally felt like this was uh, something that would make her and all the girls come together and yes. finally be on one accord. When you know it's constantly been beef, whether it's her begging for friendship with Lisa to her being mad at Whitney because Whitney's friends with Lisa, but she's still kissing Lisa's ass. Like, girl, it definitely felt like Heather just wanted a moment to bring everybody together. But Meredith is still my girl. Yep. Because Meredith... Yeah, she's a realist. Listen, Meredith, I feel like still kept her, I feel like her, her uh, middle ground with this situation with Monica. Like she, cause it was easy to, I feel like go in on Monica. And I think that her choosing not to, and kind of just be like, yeah, I don't like what she did, but we've all said things. And yeah, I said this, you know, and <laughs> kind of you was, you know, kind of letting them think that she said all of it at first. That's kind of what I felt. But I also felt like I don't really care because if you're going to come up, come into our group on some messy shit like this, you get what you get. So I wasn't really mad at Meredith for kind of putting a lot of the things that she was saying about Angie K on to Monica. Mm -hmm. But uh, I still like the way she handled it at the reunion show. I also, I, I, girl, I hate, I hate to say this, but Mary, girl, they need Mary. Like they, they don't need nothing else. They need yeah. those little scenes where Mary is just saying the stupidest shit, and we dying laughing at it because she was definitely committed. I hope so. Yeah, I think they need to revamp, uh, rethink this. I think they need to bring Mary and Monica back. As much as them ladies wanted to print, pretend and act mad, I still feel like Whitney would film with her, and I also feel like Meredith would still film with her as well. They would. Mm -hmm. they so would. um, I also feel like Lisa and Heather 
wanted to have a moment similar to what Bondi was saying to feel like they in charge of the girls. Like I did this, like, especially Heather, they're going to thank me for this. Cause Heather needs this validation thing. Mm -hmm. She like so much. She needs people to, Oh, if it wasn't for Heather, we would have never found out who you were. Girl F Heather. Mm -hmm. Heather be bogus as hell too. Lisa really works on my nerves, especially during that really? reunion show. I was like, when, I ain't gonna lie. I, Monica was going in on Lisa. Yes. Oh my gosh, she was. I was, I was loving it. I ain't never seen nobody read like that. It wasn't even no damn read. It was just a destruction. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's just your old face ass up. <laughs> I love like, it. They the need up, her. Bitch. I was like, whoa, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> And it was they up there with like her. Candace. You know how yeah. Candace was we are white adjacent looking gutter snipe bitch. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Clutch is they pearls. need Monica, honey. They do. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. And so that's all I got for reality TV, y'all. Um, uh, we got gossip. Well, we got one more reality TV thing, but we gonna swing into gossip. Talking about the City Girls. Um, What a time was what, 2016? Was that when mm -hmm. the City Girls, 2017, when the City Girls was popping, it was City Girls up to He smacked up. Oh okay. my God, yes. Yeah. I'll take your man. Oh, that was my Ooh. song. Oh, that was my song. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I had a TikTok video but I don't really want to play it. Um, I think we could just talk about what happened, which to me almost felt like a whole lot of nothing. And it kind of felt like things that people were already speculating. So JT and Santana get into it on Twitter. Um, then Young Miami jumps in and JT is like, what songs we're talking about you? Like, why are you playing crazy? Because Young Miami's on some like, oh, I'm so positive. I root for all the girls. You know, I'm always like, go, bitch, go. And JT is just like, girl, get on this internet and be fake again, right? <laughs> so they move on from that. And somebody goes, um, JT asked Miami, what songs did you think was about you since, you know, we beefing or whatever. And everybody's been talking about the song called Sideways or Sideways and No Bars. And people felt like that was direct shade at Young Miami. So they go back and forth on Twitter. And the reason why I feel like the TikTok video is not worth sharing is because we see them interact with each other, getting into it on X, Twitter, whatever. But the reality is these two have already been beefing offline. And that's the piece that we're missing. So they were beefing offline. And it's clear that JT feels like, you know, Young Miami is getting gassed up by her clique. Um, a lot of people also called out lyrics where JT says stuff like, um, you know, I'm a city girl, even when I'm not a city girl or something like I I'm alone, but I'm in a group or something like I'm on my own, but I'm in a group. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm not really feeling no ways because they ended up making up. They, they hop offline and they get on the phone. Then they get back online and Young Miami finds an old tweet and is like, bitch, why are you saying this if we just got off the phone? JT is like, this is before. Okay, love you. We good. So they back cool. I blame Diddy. And you blame, <laughs> I, I think that's what it is, to be honest. Um, not directly, but like, I kept thinking about rap shit. I seen somebody on TikTok saying something like, it seems like they were never friends. And I was thinking to myself like, no, they weren't really ever friends. Rap shit literally was about them. They never said it was about them, but rap shit was about them. There were two girls that came together. One was not really a rapper. Um, I forgot Mia. Mia was the girl on rap shit, and she was a video girl, pretty much just like a um, industry hoe, but she rapped, and she was in a group. And her only motivation for being in this rap group was to support her daughter and basically get out the hood. And her um, baby daddy was a producer. And it's given JT and Young Miami. They work yep. together, but they were not friends like that. So I think as they try to navigate, like, being famous, Young Miami has different motives. Like, JT want to make music and stay low-key, especially after getting released from prison. Mm -hmm. And Miami want to be in the mix with shit. So I think they just live two totally different lifestyles. Um, and JT don't have to go as hard when it comes to being in the streets. So I think that's all that was about. But um, 
Yeah, did I sum that up? Like, yeah. I feel like that's all the mess. That's all it was. It was a thousand tweets, but I'm like, yeah. do I really need to go one by one? No, mm-hmm. no, nobody needs to do that. Cause girl, I don't even understand half the shit they be saying anyway. Cause you know they don't, they don't, they 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 type the way they talk, and if you don't hear it, <laughs> you don't know what the fuck going on, girl. I need to hear it. And sometimes when I hear it, I don't understand. Right. But I will say this. Ever since Young Miami was standing there like a fucking duck with that go poppy sign and JT looked extremely uncomfortable is when, and I feel like it goes back even before Diddy on some slick shit. Cause I feel like Carisha don't like um, Lil Uzi because I think Lil Uzi is disrespectful and will probably sometimes put his hands on JT in private. I think he know not to do it in front of people, but in private, I think he can be a tad bit disrespectful and abusive. And I've seen FaceTimes where they've been on live together and you can just tell that Carisha did not see it for him. And it was probably because of the way he treats her sometimes because he was talking to them real bad one time. And I was like, who the fuck is this little nigga talking to? <laughs> like, And they just like letting him talk to him like that, you know? And so then, you know, you fast forward, like you said, it's definitely given the TV show because Mia is the one that went to jail and JT is the one that went to jail. Um, and we did, did she go to jail? It was the know. other girl. Shannon went to jail. Shannon was JT. I mean, Mia was on Miami. Shannon. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Um, girl, I'm sad on some slick shit because in my mind, I feel like JT might be going through some little shit with well, oh boy, but this shit young Miami then got herself wrapped up in with Diddy, I think is darker and I, I think it's sadder. And I think it's when your friend is really out of pocket or just, you know, being self-destructive and you can't make them see it. So all you can really do is keep your distance because essentially I feel like young Miami act like she don't want to rap. She act like she don't want to perform and she just does it to keep her re- her relevancy. Um, but yeah, y'all, because they both got songs out. And that's another thing. I, I sometimes think that everybody's pretending on the internet because they have songs and shit that they're promoting. Because Glorilla and JT yeah. got into it first this week. And that shit also, you know, felt like let's drudge up some old tea, some old drama so we can go viral this week because everybody got projects out right now. That's what it felt like. Mm. Yeah. Until well, Saucy got it. When Saucy said some shit about that tweet that was kind of about Diddy, that was the moment when I was like, okay, it might be real. Huh. Yeah, I don't really know much to say about them. They just not fucking with each other. I think it's been like that for some time and it came to a head i think everything jt said she meant that she she'd been feeling away for her to end her message Even though they I love made you the most <laughs> right mm-hmm. yeah it'll never be the same just like she said all that shit she was rapping no bars sideways I, ain't nobody gonna convince me that any of those lyrics were about cardi but all of this shit was definitely about young miami now, see, I didn't think that when she said no bars. I thought she was talking about herself because people say that about her. Mm. Like, people say both of them can't rap. So that's why I felt like when she was saying the no bars thing, it was like, I'm saying what y'all say. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because mm. I don't really give a fuck. But I didn't think it was about Young Miami, honestly, because I feel like that. Y'all hoes can't rap shit be going for both of y'all. No, no, no. I don't think the whole song No Bars was about her. I think it was like a line or two. That okay. was in that one that was like a shot at her. But sideways for sure is definitely giving it'll never be the old days, all of that, mm-hmm. like I don't fuck with you type thing. Oh, I, I think that too. definitely was Thomas. I'm doing all that wifey shit, knowing him fuck with you. I don't know if that was uh sideways or if that was no bars, whichever one people was was thinking that that was about Cardi. And I'm like, that makes no sense for it to be about Cardi, even if she is a wife, and even wife. if he's cheating. Like it just don't make like whatever she and does is gonna be wifey shit because she's hey, married. <laughs> It oh, makes boy. sense about okay. Miami because you over here doing this wifey shit, holding up a sign, some of some poppy or whatever. But then when he's sitting on your platform and you asking, are we really that? He's like, we just having a good time. That's giving he don't fuck with you. Like you wanted every- it to be more. 
boom, she was talking about her friend. And it ain't going to be nobody to make me think nothing different. If anybody want to be the lead, JT, y'all can. But I don't. Because how you going to sit up there and call this girl a sad case? Say all of the shit that you said. Uh, every time somebody doing something good for me, oh, she get real mad. You said a lot of shit about her and showed your card. But then uh -huh. you want to talk about how much you love her at the end of the day. Now, nah, y'all been beefing. Y'all been brewing for a long time. And that's just, Even, you know, what it is. And I'm blaming JT uh, for not being, I'm sorry, not JT, but Miami for not being interested in rapping. Bitch, I held this shit down when you was locked up and I was pregnant. I'm tired. Yeah, so, yeah. that's true. That's true. Even the um, I love you the most with Shay. Like, I do more for you. I care more about you than you, you about me. Boom. But that I like how Shay. you came out and supported Santana, though. Like, it's always her feeling um, like he's she's being treated unfair. But I just feel like when JT got out, I mean, I don't know what happened. I think Bondi may have mentioned it earlier. No, or maybe it was you, Nisi. I don't know. But basically, they have two different personalities. And mm -hmm. JT did say in an interview that the way young Miami goes hard, she don't have kids. JT ain't got kids for her to go hard. Mm -hmm. So I just think that they have always been on two different levels. And because, I, I don't know, I feel like Uzi got a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you know <laughs> JT has vented to Miami and you know if you got a friend that you vent to a lot about somebody and they feel like they're giving you advice and then at some point you don't like you're not listening at some point they're just gonna stop giving you advice and if and you make them feel like you're pushing them away they're gonna fall back so if she fell if Miami fell back off JT and got closer with Saucy that ain't Saucy fault but Saucy even clocked JT and called her out for how she's treated him so, I mean, I mean, everybody just, you know, it's interesting. They could say that they made up, but it'll never be the same, though. Uh -uh. I wonder, y'all, I'm wondering the way y'all, you know, the way JT talking. <clears throat> I just wonder if she tried to, you know, get her involved in whatever the fuck be going on over there. Because something's Which, going on over there. Like you mean, JT with JT and Uzi? No, I'm talking about with Diddy. Diddy. You know oh. what I'm saying? Because, like, I, I doubt that. I don't think Uzi would go for that. I think that JT has often moved to the beat of, of Uzi. True. Do y'all remember that clip of Miami? Well, not remember, but the clip had resurfaced like two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. It was Miami on the carpet with some girl. I feel like it was a Zeus girl. And the girl was like, oh, you don't remember me? And Miami was like, no, what do I remember you from? And she was like, we went on vacation together. I and agree. Miami was like, did we? And she was like, yeah, girl. And she was like, oh, okay, I remember you. The whole time, JT was sitting there side eyeing, like, what the Ooh, fuck y'all yeah, got going? I remember you, that shit. You know shit? what clip I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. I've seen it surfacing, yeah. And it was given, like, sex party. Like, mm -hmm. like you got this, see, you got this shit going on. We supposed to be here on some business. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. why I said I wonder if, you know, because <clears throat> think about it, y'all. JT, like they're both beautiful, but as I'm sitting here looking, like JT is gorgeous. She is. And I feel like niggas would pay for JT. And if Diddy got young Miami mine gone enough for her to be out here being bottom bitch, there could have been a time where an inappropriate moment took place and Jatavia was looking for Carisha to be her friend. But it's like, girl, that's Diddy, and I don't know what you want me to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, not to say anything happened, but you know, you know how niggas be. Like, all you got to do is be in their presence for 10 minutes, and they didn't say some disrespectful, outlandish shit to you because they can. So I, I feel like both of them have probably allowed these niggas to disrespect the other one, and it made, you know, it made each of them feel like it's between you and my man and y'all know how these girls are my man my man my man even though y'all together is really how y'all got here and yeah. you know that's that's sad to me a little bit you know what i mean yeah well um i'm sure we're gonna hear more of them falling out it's gonna be another time they fall out for sure because they very much was given they they not cool like they was um okay Another thing, Ioki, Ioki Simmons, baby girl. Mm. She was seen with this 65 year old restaurateur um, on the beach, and she came out saying that they're not dating. 
there that is it doesn't exist it's over it's nothing it's basically what she came and told us but the amount of gag that i gagged when i seen her on the beach with this man simply because yes aoki is of age but you're not gonna tell me that it's very odd that this 65 year old man is attracted to her childlike body girl Mm. she she looks like Mm. a child to me not, it's not even like, oh, he's with a younger woman. She looks like a child. And this disgusts me. And her mentality, too. When you hear her talk, mm-hmm. she, first of all, I believe she's playing up being ditzy on the internet. But I also feel like that that's also like a part of what's going on here in order she to. She's super smart, though. She went to Harvard. Exactly. That's yeah. why I'm saying she's playing up a ditzy type of role. Like, I don't know why, but recently the videos I've seen of her when she was talking about this shit. It's like, why are you talking like that? I've heard you speak like you, un- you know, she's acting like she doesn't know what she's going to say versus uh-huh. time. Yeah, okay, we can say that. <laughs> we we can say, we can say she's acting high. And child, I don't think high off the stuff that I be on because I, listen, I know what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Listen. I, uh, I I feel sad because I feel like this is what she feels like she has to do and what she should do in order for her to maintain the lifestyle she's accustomed to. Um, because I don't think her father and her mother are able to do it the way they did before. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's definitely giving book sense, no common sense. It is definitely giving that. But I also feel like this is what she's been taught. Get an old man to come and take care of you. But this is so nasty, girl. Like, I, I don't feel- want to I feel like it's definitely something she's been taught, but I also feel like she's in a rebellious stage. Um, I feel like because her mom went through this, she likely wouldn't want her child to go through this, even though she jokingly said to her dad, if you don't, you know, continue to give me my allowance, I'm going to go get me a sugar, whatever. I feel like that she might be in the stage of rebel, uh, rebelling. And it's still not a good look. Cause I just, I'm cringing seeing the photos like Nick, like this could be your grandchild. Like, what the hell are you doing? Uh-huh. This looks horrible. Like, this looks so bad. And the way she just kept calling him baby. Did y'all hear at the end of the video? He said something about Mary J. Blige. I said, no, he didn't. Sound what? like he was yeah. saying Mary J. Blige tried to talk to him or something like that. Yeah, they were they had she was in the, the truck or something in the van. He was trying to get them, I guess, a hotel. When he got back, he said he couldn't book it or whatever, like that. And um yeah, they was just talking, and then she said something about any final words, you know, that you like to say anonymously on social media or whatever. And I think he said no, and then he went in to say, you know, one time Mary J. Blige tried to something, something sound like he said tried to talk to him or whatever the case was. It was giving weird, and she was like, "Baby, no, no, not be quiet right now. You, you hush." I was like, "This is weird as hell. Go get y'all child," even though she's a grown ass woman, but. It's a mess. Mm-hmm. Okay. She surely did. Yeah. And now they coming out talking about they're not together. I don't believe that. She just don't want none of the backlash that comes with it. She with that man. Exactly. She's embarrassed. Mm-hmm. And I'm so tired of her bringing her, her body onto the internet. I'm like, girl, go sit down. And then you bring your body onto the internet. You tell these folks, don't talk about how, how small I am because I'm going to get fired. I'm going to lose jobs because of that. Stop coming on social media the way that you are in your skimpy uh bathing suits and then not want anybody to say anything. Now, granted, I do understand they should keep them, their opinions to themselves. But how often do we get that here in America? <laughs> we don't. Okay. So with that, just stop hopping on live. It's some she got something going on. She's in crisis mode or something. Another one that jumped off the porch, <laughs> Lady Hell. What the hell? Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just be safe. They needs all this. Um, white in a whole another country. Child, what the fuck? Be safe. That's all I can say. Okay, so the last thing that I want us to get into is the Love and Merge Huntsville cast photo. But before we get into it, we got a thousand people in the room. Y'all do us a favor and go ahead and like the video.
All right. I, I seen that mute when I clicked the video and I was like, was I talking the whole time? And the thing was on mute, but y'all heard me, right? When I, tra oh, yeah. did y'all hear me transition? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm like, damn, was that off the whole time? Um, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Love and Marriage Huntsville, y'all, is back on May 4th with a couple changes. We see that um, Tiffany and Big Lou are not there, which they told us at the end of last season. We see a familiar face return, Destiny. Will the familiar face come back with a storyline? We'll see. We got a new couple in the bottom right. What are they going to come with? Do y'all think that the show is going to be different? We also see that the Fletchers are main cast now, even though they should have been main cast last season. Mm -hmm. For me personally, I love Love and Marriage Huntsville. Um, I, I don't know. I, I really do. Even whenever they go like episodes and it'd be like, okay, it ain't hitting on shit. I don't know. It's just something about like, the regular ass drama of the show that I like, but honestly, I feel like we need to hit a curve on this show. And when I say hit a curve, I'm talking about with um, Tisha and Marceau and K the Scots period, because last season talking about Kimmy's pussy, the whole season, <laughs> And I didn't want to be disrespectful and say broken pussy. But the people who followed me, y'all know what I mean when I say broken pussy. I wasn't throwing shade at her. But <laughs> what I'm saying is she kept coming to us, telling us how the shit was broken every season. And to me, was not giving herself grace because she was trying to keep up with a man who was sex obsessed. Right. But anyway, talking about that for a whole season was exhausted. Um, Tisha and Marceau having conflict with everybody else. So they really don't have to talk about the drama in their marriage. Um, was exhausting. So I feel like when it comes to those two, we really need to hit a curve and figure out what you're going to bring to the show other than being staples from season one. So um, what are y'all's thoughts on, you know, Destiny returning, everybody else, Love Mary Tunsville, May 4th. What's, what's up? I'm, I'm not looking forward to it, to be honest. Everybody looks great. But I'm not looking forward to it. And that's because I feel like whenever I get my hopes up, they always disappoint in some type of way. Um, I feel like a lot of times, uh, you know, it's just a lot of open ended storylines and not because nothing's happening. It's because y'all are not telling us the stuff that's happening. You know what I mean? There's always way more shit going on on the Internet than we ever really get to see on the show. And then there's always a trailer where we see some shit that we never see throughout the actual season, every season. So at this point, I just I kind of feel like, yeah, I, I, I'll see what y'all doing when y'all get here. But up until then, girl, I, I just can't be bothered to care about the 50, 11 stories a week that, you know, somebody's telling about y'all on the Internet. Um, for me, um, I'm with Nisi on the curve. We're gonna have to hit that. Um, because when it comes to Mel and Martell, I could care the fuck less about this uh court situation they got going on. Uh, Kimmy gonna continue to stick by Maurice, like it ain't no thing. Uh, we really gonna have to see what's going on between Tisha and Marceau when they not come to our face and uh play. If y'all struggling, having issues with y'all in y'all marriage, it's normal, I'm sure. Just talk about it. Y'all spent all these years worried about what's going on with Mel and Martell. What's really going on with y'all? Um, when it comes to Destiny, let Destiny not be the one that's actually going to bring a, a, a decent storyline. We'll see how they capture it. Because the other couple that's not pictured here is the producer that's dating Destiny's ex. Whole time she was yeah. thinking that they had a mutual family member, according to the interview that she did with... Uh, the guy over on Dear Future Wifey. So she also said that they was trying to get on a show or get a show um, and by using her name or whatever the case is. So I guess she needed to, you know, come on back, make her money. And I feel like after being fired the first time, she knows exactly what Carlos is expecting of her. So I do think that she might just might deliver in an effort to kind of save her coin, even if, you know, it's her working with her ex and then said producer that was her actual producer because I think each person or group may get assigned a certain producer and not this girl working directly with you having your number and stuff and she over there making moves on your ex like yikes but um that's the only person that's really gonna be bringing anything I mean the Fletchers may be something with their family 
Um, I don't see Stormy and uh, her husband bringing a whole lot unless they talking about their family issues. But from the description, it seems like they are going to learn about a love triangle by way of I, somebody. So I guess this couple that we're about to be introduced, I don't know. My assumption would be that maybe they, they are familiar. Maybe Stormy and her husband is familiar with somebody that is in between their marriage. I'm not sure. Um, but we'll see. I feel like they got a lot going on. It's a lot of different folks going on. I just hope they don't lose people any more than what they already have when it comes to this show. Hopefully the new additions and the return bring something. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's enough to keep it going. Yeah, because I feel like Love and Marriage DC, I feel like they got a lot going on, but it ain't entertaining either. Like, it's just, oh, okay, let me watch this because ain't shit else going on. Matter of fact, bring the bells back. How about that? All right, every every episode, Joy and Clifton walk into the room. Hello, beautiful black people. Salutations. Okay. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> bring the bells back. I can't. Okay. So we can roast Letitia. Yeah, hopefully. Letitia. He, he likes to run his shows concurrently, like at the same time. And I haven't heard anything about Bell Collective. So, mm. I don't know. But I wish I see. That's, that's pretty much all I have. Y'all have anything else to add for tonight? Girl, no. Not that I could think of. Okay. I feel like we had a pretty... Um, nice swift you know show we stuck to the topics i felt like we had a good time we'll be back next week y'all um y'all be sure to follow us on all platforms at ooh ladies first follow all of our individual youtube channels tiktoks twitters we need to get this updated bondi because you got a different um twitter now yeah it's bondi rose bond what's blue, it bond it's blue rose bondi Blue Rose Bondi. Okay, mm -hmm. Jamie, that's me. And Niecy Dixon. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye. Bye.